name is Father Dan Cambra. I'm a Marian of the Immaculate Conception, the religious community that operates the National Shrine of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Today I, I've chosen St. Jude as a, a man to reflect on in our own lives. St. Jude's letter is found in the scriptures and as a matter of fact it was the first epistle I remember trying to memorize back when I was in high school. A lot of people have a devotion to St. Jude because he's referred to as the patron saint of impossible cases. And that title, a patron saint of impossible cases, goes back to a visit that he made to the king of Edessa shortly after Jesus had suffered, died, and rose from the dead. It seems the king of Edessa had been suffering from leprosy for a very long time. And as a king of a very wealthy nation, he certainly had access to the best medical treatments available in that time period, but none of them brought him any relief or recovery. And he heard about Jesus, this miracle worker, and he decided that he would send for Jesus. And he sent someone to bring Jesus back to Edessa to cure him of his leprosy. But the person that went and sought out Jesus, by the time he found Jesus, discovered that Jesus was already on his route to Calvary. And since Jesus was not going to be able to come back to him, he decided to attempt to draw a picture of Jesus. Now, the picture of Jesus that the artist attempted to draw was very unsatisfactory. And ultimately, the artist threw it aside. Possibly confusing the situation with the veil of Veronica. Some people have gotten the idea uh, that the artist made an impression of Jesus' face with a piece of cloth and brought that to the king of Edessa. But another tradition, one that's a, a little bit more firmly held in the minds of many people, is that after Jesus rose from the dead, he received the burial shroud from the Virgin Mary and he placed the burial shroud in a basket. And with the burial shroud over the rim of the basket, it kind of made a frame for the face of Jesus. And that's what's memorialized in the medal or the medallion that we usually see on the chest of St. Jude in most of his iconography or official statues and portraits. Now it is likely that that's precisely what it goes back to. St. Jude is St. Jude Thaddeus, as we can recall him, is also St. Jude of Alpheus or St. Jude Cleophas. He's the son of Alpheus or the son of Cleophas. And uh, Jude along with his brother Simon, were martyred together. His brother James, the younger, is also the author of the letters of St. James. And his fourth brother, Joseph, make up those men who are referred to as the brothers of Jesus. You see, Alpheus was the brother of St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus. And after Joseph's death, Alpheus would have been, so to speak, the co-father or co-padre, if you will, of Jesus. Hence the tradition of the brothers and sisters of Jesus. Mary Clophus, the wife, was also 
one of the women who stood at the cross with Mary as Christ died. And this close circle of very close kin could very easily have been among those who would have had the shroud as part of their possession. Jude, when he goes to visit the king of Edessa, brings with him the face of Jesus stretched over the rim of the basket and clearly showing his face. And the moment he enters the presence of the king of Edessa, the king stands up and announces that he has been cured of his incurable disease. Jude, for his part, does not take it as a sign of his greatness, but attributes everything to Jesus and his healing presence. As we recall in the letter, excuse me, as we recall in the writings of Isaiah, that by his stripes we were healed. So the face of Jesus covered with blood and sweat at the time of his death and passion, reminds us that it is those stripes that have brought us healing in body, in mind, and spirit, and that by his passion we are now called to eternal life, not only with him, with all those who hold on to the promise that Christ offers us of salvation in his name and his name alone. Praise be Jesus.